Welcome to Pure Heart Church Online, a place where we say it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to pretend, and it's not okay to stay stuck. If you are here and you're tuning in with us for the very first time, thank you. Thank you for choosing to watch Pure Heart Church Online. We know that God has a special message for you today. You are joining the online Pure Heart Church community where we pray with one another, we support one another, whatever circumstances we may be facing. And we have some really cool opportunities about community that are specifically for you. So before we get any further, I wanna introduce you to my friend, Sam. She's gonna talk about Heart Cruise. Sam, get on over here. <laughs> hey guys, um, if you haven't heard, it's Heart Cruise season Woo! and our crews are launching this week and it's not too late to join. So yeah. if you're interested, you can go to either our website or our app and you can sign up that way. And then also if you're interested in ever leading a crew, you can email heartcruise at pureheart.org and we'd love to talk to you more about it. It's gonna be a great season and we'd love for you to join. Are you afraid to open up to others? Maybe that's especially true when it comes to opening up to others at church. We're afraid that we're gonna be judged for some of our struggles, our addictions, or mental health challenges, or maybe even questions about faith, about God. But you know what, God created community for a purpose, and opening up at church is a part of that. Necessary part of our lives, our spiritual growth is what community is. We were never intended to do life alone. That's why we have a saying at Pure Heart, it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to pretend and it's not okay to stay stuck. It's really a foundational principle of our church because we believe church should be a safe place to process through pain or trauma, be a place where we can walk through the embarrassing or shameful parts of our life because that's when we realize that God wants to heal us and then use our story to reach others, help and encourage others, and really show His power and His love to the world. And so as we roll into week two of Heart and Soul, let God show you the areas of your life that He wants to impact through community. Welcome to church.
I want to welcome you all to our online campus. Thank you so much for joining us. Brand new year, 2022. A shout out to Crossroads Recovery. Man, we love you guys. We're standing with you, believing for full recovery and strength in your lives. You guys are not alone. And then for all of you watching around the state of Arizona and around the country and around the world, thank you for being a part of this service today. So before I dive into part two of our series, Heart and Soul, I want to take a moment and reflect on 2021. What an amazing year of impact we were able to have together. Those of you online and our Glendale campus, our Peoria campus, our Crossroads campus, what a great impact we've had on the world around us. And so you need to understand with pure heart. We look at life as kingdom of God, big K, not kingdom of God, little K. We pray for other churches every weekend in our services. We actually take time out of our services to pray for another church because we know we are not the kingdom. We are part of the kingdom. Everything that we do from working with youth pastors around the country to help them finish strong, our Better Together movement of churches across Arizona, encouraging pastors to finish strong. Everything is about helping other churches. We spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars from our budget on personnel and programming for other churches because we believe it matters that we're in this together. Now, we're gonna show you for just a moment some highlights from 2021. The things that God, and we give him all the glory for this. This is not about us. This is about him and what he's allowed us to do. So here's some highlights of impact from 2021. 
CRTV Worship released a four-song EP called Summer, available on all music platforms. Over the span of 52 weeks, our online campus saw 130,000 logins around 174 different countries. Hundreds of families started calling Pure Heart home across our Glendale, Peoria, and online campuses. We saw hundreds and hundreds of hands raised, around 200 we actually got names of, and 100 of them were baptized. We expect even more for 2022. Heart Youth saw close to 200 students make a life-changing decision and close to 500 students in attendance between Valley Conference and Valley Camp, leading to over 1 million impressions on social media. 25,000 households were served through our Life Bridge at Pure Heart Resource Centers. We were able to serve 13 schools throughout the year in our partnership with School Connect. We've seen near 150 adults on Monday nights for our Monday night support groups. We distributed 300 Thanksgiving dinner boxes that were able to serve full dinners to families of five to six people. There were 389 children in El Salvador that chose us to sponsor them through our partnership with World Vision. 1,200 children received toys and were able to disperse 100 bicycles at Christmas this year through our Adoptive Family Initiative. We saw around 8,000 kids and adults in attendance for our Christmas Eve services and a full house at our Peoria campus on December 26th. And God is only just getting started. We have great expectancy for what He will do through all of us in 2022. Isn't that amazing? Well, let's just take a moment and let's pray together. Let's thank God for what He has done. Let's give Him glory for what He has done. Father God, thank you for the impact that you've had, not only in the state of Arizona, but around the country and around the world. Thank you, Father, for giving us the privilege to give, to serve, to love, to pray for other people, for us to get out of our own little worlds and into the lives of other people. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. We give you all praise. We give you all glory. And Lord, we just say right now that we couldn't have done any of this without your spirit, without you, Holy Spirit, moving, guiding, providing for us to make this difference. Thank you for involving us. And then, Lord, I just want to take a moment. And for all of you listening today, if you want to do something, and I've never asked you to do this before, maybe just kind of hold your hands like this. I want to pray a blessing over you as we start 2022. Let's just, let me just pray over you. Father God, I thank you for everyone who's listening today. Lord, would you pour out your blessings on them? Would you help them to grow in wisdom, insight, understanding? Would you guard their lives physically? Lord, bring healing to those who need to be healed. Bring strength internally and emotionally and mentally for those who are struggling emotionally and mentally today. Strengthen us on the inside out, oh God. May you bless us and keep us and give us your peace, Lord God. In Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, amen. Thank you again for joining us. Here we go. Second part of our, our series, brand new series for the year, Heart and Soul. Pastor John masterfully started this series last weekend talking about our great need for community. And we all know deep down inside that the quality of our lives depends on the quality of our relationships. My goodness, if anything has proved this, it's the last couple of years of many of us dealing with isolation. Now understand this, I, I'm not diminishing the impact of COVID-19, I'm not at all, because here's what you need to know. I have an aunt, very precious in our family, who just a few months ago passed from COVID-19. I know the impact and the devastation, but let me tell you something, even greater than the impact of COVID has been, on, on our physical health has been the impact of COVID in isolation on our mental health. And I, I think that what we're dealing with mentally from isolation and from fear of being near one another is gonna ripple into this next decade. And so the isol isolation impacts our mental health. We see anxiety shooting through the roof among people in our nation and around the world. We see it shooting through the roof in our young people as they're dealing with fear and anxiety. It affects us physically, our physical health. I was, my wife loves the show 2020, and one night she was watching an episode called Escaping from a House of Horrors about these 15 children who were kept in isolation by their parents, sometimes chained to, bed, chained to beds. It was a horrible, horrible story. I'm like, sweetheart, why are we watching this? But one of the things that was said in this documentary is that the hearts of these children, physical hearts didn't develop. Their bodies didn't develop. Some of them were like 17, 18 years of age, and they looked like they were literally 12 or 13 years of age. And what the, what the, the commentator said was, it wasn't just a lack of nutrition, it was isolation. That actually being in isolation had stunted their growth physically. 
So it, it impacts us mentally. It impacts us. Isolation impacts us physically. It also impacts our spiritual health. We were meant to grow in our relationship with Christ with each other. It's possible, listen, it's possible to be in a church, in a physical campus, and be in a huge crowd, like at our Glendale campus or our Peoria campus, in a crowd of hundreds of people or a thousand people, and still feel isolated and still be isolated. That's why we say all the time at Pure Heart, we need to get out of rows and into circles. Get out of looking at the backs of each other's heads and get into circles where we can truly get to know each other face to face and understand each other's lives and be real with each other. Um, let me show you a statement by the Apostle Paul that demonstrates his heart and his soul for his need for deep relationship. So, so Paul is writing a letter to his friends, or writing a letter to his good friend, Timothy, who was like literally a son in the faith to him. He had raised him up in his relationship with Jesus Christ, led him to Jesus Christ. And so he writes this letter, second to, in second, his second letter to Timothy, he writes this letter talking to Timothy about finishing strong, being a great leader in the church where he planted him, to stay focused on what really matters, Timothy. And then Paul has this real and very raw heart moment. He says this in chapter four, verse six through eight, in 2 Timothy, he says this. He says, listen, Timothy, as for me, my life is already being poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. He's being so real about this. He's like, I know all these wonderful things that God has done through my life. I've, it's been poured out like an offering to him. But man, Timothy, I need you to know my life is about to be over in this life. He says, I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I have remained faithful and now a prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord of the righteous judge will give me on the day of his return. Such confidence in Christ, such strength in the face of death, such power from this man of God. And then in verse nine, one of my favorite moments in the New Testament, Paul has this very real moment and he says these words, after I finished the race, I've run the course, I've done what God's called me to do, I've been faithful, there's a huge prize waiting for me in heaven. Timothy, please come to me as soon as you can. He's like, Timothy, I'm confident in what's coming next. I'm confident that God's gonna bring me through. I just want you here. I love how real that is from the depth of Paul's soul. And what he's saying is this, yes, I'm strong in Christ, but God has created me for relationship. And honestly, the quality of my life is dependent on my connection with you, Timothy, being here with me. Now, I wanna share with you all today, just quickly, and next week I'm gonna go even deeper with this, I wanna share with you two heart and soul truths about authentic community that I've discovered in my life. Two truths that I know deep down inside matter greatly and why we need to be, this year, making community, making relationships a priority in our life. Here's the first truth I wanna share with you. It's this, the who is more important than the what. See, every year, billions and billions of pe people set New Year's goals or resolutions. Uh, my son, Luke, came home the other day, I think it was like January the, the 1st, came home New Year's Day. He's like, Dad, me and my girlfriend, he and his girlfriend, Sydney, she's awesome, Sid the kid. He said, we spent half a day discussing our goals for 2022, our relationship goals, our spiritual goals, our physical goals, our educational goals. I'm so proud of him. Sometimes I'm like, Whose kid are you, man? You are, he is so focused and so set in life. I know in my own life, I set goals every year. My biggest goal every year has been, I want to lose 50 pounds. It's been for like the last 10 years. This year, it's 55 pounds, okay? So what you understand there is it's a goal I continue to wrestle with. But this year, I'm approaching my goals and I challenge Luke with the same thing. We're approaching our goals this year in a very different way. I'm connecting, listen to me, this year I'm going to connect a who to every what. See, goals are almost always based on what we want to do or what we want to accomplish. And every year we have a list of things we want to do and we want to accomplish, but here's what I'm gonna do this year. I wanna connect a who. I wanna connect a relationship with every goal that is in my heart. People ask me all the time, you know, what are, what are your New Year's goals? What are, you, what are you thinking about for this year? Especially other leaders that I'm connected with. Here's a better question. Who's helping you reach your goals? That's a better question. Listen, Michael Jordan, Colby Bryant, they were great basketball players, but they never reached their goal of winning a championship until Scottie Pippen and Shaq showed up. 
Devin Booker for the Phoenix Suns was a great basketball player, is a great basketball player. He's an incredible, the best basketball player currently, in my opinion, in the NBA. All right, I guess I do live in the Phoenix area. Sorry about that from the rest of you around the world, the country, all right? But he's he has struggled in to win anything until Chris Paul showed up. Go Suns, right? We all saw them go to the championship last year. We won't talk about the last three, last four games, but they made it to the championship. First time in forever. All right, all the stories of people, listen, all the stories that I've read over the years of people who've accomplished great things, have a team of who's around them, a deep part of their story, of people who've done great things, all the biographies and autobiographies that I've read, in all of those stories, they tell a story of a group of who's that gathered around them to help them accomplish great things. I tell our staff at Pure Heart all the time, who is more important than what? Don't get me wrong, we have a lot of great what's that need to get done, great mission that needs to be accomplished, what matters. But the who is more important because we're not gonna get anything done without a team. We need relationships. People are our greatest asset, the most valuable thing. That's why God made them as the only, only eternal thing in existence. Everything else is gonna be gone. People are eternal, they matter the most, most trainers will tell you, and trust me, I've had a few trainers, all right? They'll tell you, if you wanna transform your body, it can't just be about the what. It can't just be about the food that you're gonna, what food you're gonna eat, or what exercises you're gonna do, or what times of the day you're gonna work out. It has to be motivated by a who. Who are you changing for? Do you wanna see this transformation for yourself? Do you wanna see this transformation because you wanna be a good steward of the body that Jesus has given to you, that God has created you in? Sometimes it's, do you wanna change for your kids? You know, for, for, for my wife and I this year, and we're gonna share more about this in the future, we, we, wanna, we wanna transform because we wanna be there for the long haul, for our kids, for our grandkids. It matters. And so this year, instead of just what I'm gonna work out and what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna eat, I'm more focused on the who I wanna be transformed and be healthy for. I have a really good friend, he uh, leads Hope Church, and they're in like seven different colleges and universities all over the country right now, doing an amazing, amazing job. But my, this leader says this all the time, and I love this, he says this all the time, to, to incoming college freshmen who are all focused on, well, they're focused on lots of things, but one of their main focuses is, um, what degree am I gonna get? What's my major gonna be? What path am I gonna take in life? This leader says this to college freshmen, thousands of college freshmen every year. He says this, Pick your tribe before you pick your path. Before you pick your path, pick your tribe. Pick the group of people you wanna do life with, who are gonna encourage you and strengthen you because that's what's gonna be most important to you, reaching your goals and your dreams in this college for your education, for your future. See, Christianity itself is all about who, not what. See, all religions start with what? A series and a system of rules to follow to put you in right relationships with a God. Christianity is totally different. Christianity starts with who, and the who is Jesus. Christianity starts with the basis of relationship, and, and everything else flows out from that. Our love for Jesus flows out, from our love for Jesus flows out all the things and the desires that God wants for our life, but he wants our life to be anchored in a relationship with him first, not in a system or a religion. The first thing that Jesus does is he gathers a group of who's, before he starts his ministry. And then when Jesus sent the disciples out to serve and to make a difference around the local community there in Israel, he sent them out two by two in groups of two because he knew they needed to be connected together, serving him together. Most pastors that I know, most pastors that I know that are struggling, most of the time when I dr drill into their life a little bit, into their heart a little bit, what I find is that they're a mile wide and an inch deep relationally. Leaders, pastors, uh, the last national study that I saw, one out of 10 senior pastors that starts in ministry right out of seminary or out of Bible college is actually still in ministry at retirement age. Only 10%, 90% of them drop out. It's because sometimes we as leaders, we as pastors, we are the worst when it comes to going deep in relationships with other people. We can be the most guarded people that there are on the planet. That's why we struggle. See, in my life, I have praying who's. I have who's in my life who pray for me all the time, for my wife, Nicole. I have accountability who's. I have who's that I go to that I know they're going to tell me the truth. 
They're going to love me enough to tell me the truth. I have encouraging who's. I have people in my life that when I need to be built up, I get around them. I spend time with them and my soul gets lifted. My heart gets lifted. I'm stronger on the inside. I remember um, here recently, Nicole and I had a huge decision to make. And so we gathered a few of our who's around us. We asked them to pray. We asked them to give us their insight, to be honest with us. We, we laid out what the decision that we were going to make. And we laid it out to them. We said, we need you to be honest. We need you to be real with us about this. And don't worry, we're not leaving pure heart or anything. It's nothing like that. It was a personal family decision. And so we gathered people around us that we knew loved us deeply, that had the wisdom in the heart of God to speak into our heart, speak into our soul as we move forward in this decision. The who's in our life matter more than the what. And I'm telling you, if we make who's a priority this year, we're gonna end 2022. You're gonna end 2022 reaching more of your goals. So here's the question. Who are the who's you need to involve in your life at a deeper level? Just take a moment and reflect on that. Think about that for a second. Matter of fact, if it, Pastor John did this last week. If you just wanna pause the video for a second, maybe you're watching with some friends, you're watching with your spouse, or uh, if you're watching alone, maybe just take a moment to journal. Take a moment to have a conversation with those in the room with you or those in the car with you if you're driving together. And just have a conversation about who are the key people in your life that you need to be more intentional this year of being open, real, honest, talking about your goals and your future, asking them to pray for you and to encourage you? What relationships do you need to make more priority this year because the quality of your life depends on the quality of your relationship? Let's just take a moment right now and let's do that. I wanna take a moment now and have you listen to the heart of Erin Windauer. She's an incredible young leader on our team. She's gonna to talk to you for a moment of how we can connect, how we can help you at Pure Heart connect in relationships, deeper relationships with one another. She's gonna talk about our crews and our heart and soul classes that we have. So here's Erin to share her heart about community action steps for all of us. Check this out. We care about you and yes, you. One of the best things we can do is to become more like Jesus is being in relationship with others and doing life together. Here at Pure Heart Church, we value getting out of rows and into circles. Now, if you are looking for a way to grow deeper in your faith and in relationships, Heart Crews are for you. Personally, Heart Crews has been an avenue that has helped me develop some of the deepest friendships I've longed and prayed for. About a year ago, I felt prompted to create spaces for God to bring in new girlfriends in my life that I would be able to lean on, pray with me, and just have fun with. A friend and I led out a young woman's heart crew and we ended up building relationships that have lasted since. Shout out to you guys, you know who you are. And leading a heart crew pushed me out of my comfort zone and God met us there, answered our prayers and gave us real friendships. Moving forward, God has placed me in a position now that I get to come alongside all of our heart crew leaders and to truly make getting out of rows and into circles come to life as a church community. If you would like to join a crew this season, head to our website or our mobile app to sign up now. Crews are filling up and signups close this month, so don't wait. Maybe you're like me and you're feeling led to lead a crew of your own or maybe with a friend. Email us at heartcrews@pureheart.org. If you aren't quite ready to jump into deep community, I wanna still encourage you to get out of your comfort zone. Stepping out to serve is a great first step to meet new people and get connected. Communities on Mission, NextGen, the Weekend Serving Team, our Resource Center, alongside many others are great places to get started here in volunteering at Pure Heart. So good. And I encourage you, please lean in to what Erin is calling us to do. She's gonna help us to get connected as a church community, her and her entire team, our entire GROW team is gonna help us get connected deeper in relationships, in heart crews over this next year. Now, the second truth, and I'm gonna get a little extra personal, a little more heartfelt with you for a second. The second truth is this, we won't know we're loved until we're known. 
You see, deep down in the heart of every human being rumbles this question. If you really knew me, would you still love me? Now, be honest with yourself. Have you ever around a group of people or people that you met for the first time or maybe you've been hanging out with them for a little while, maybe at your school, maybe, maybe where you work and you start in a new workplace and they seem to really like you and you like them and you're making some connections, you're making some friends. Have you ever had that moment when you wonder, man, if they really knew me, <laughs> they knew everything, would they really still like me, let alone would they love me? You see, we never believe that we're fully loved until that we know we are fully known. That's why getting out of rows and into circles matters. You can't get to know someone by looking at the back of their head. That's why maybe getting away from just watching alone in your living room or watching alone as you travel to and from work and connecting with other people this year is gonna make such a difference because you need to get known. We value transparency and vulnerability at Pure Heart. That's why we say it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to pretend and you don't have to stay stuck. We say that because vulnerability and being honest matters to, you, to your heart, to your soul. Because your heart is longing to be known. And deep down inside, once you're known, I was, I was just talking to a group of pastors this morning that I was meeting with, and I told them, I said, you guys know me. We've been walking together and doing life together now for almost 10 years. You know me. And I said, one of the reasons I love you so much and I know that you love me is because you know me. You know my quirks. You know my idiosyncrasies. You know I'm a little bit of a weird dude. And yet you still love me. You can't get that with surface level relationships and just kind of floating through life. When Nicole and I were dating, we've been dating for a little while and we kind of, we knew that this was going in the direction that um, I wanted to go, which was marriage. One night, uh, my wife showed up at my apartment. Uh, she knocked on the door, I answered the door and there she stood and she had this serious look on her face. We've been dating for a couple months and she had this serious look on her face I'm like, oh boy, and what you have to know, and I won't get into the details, that I had gone through a divorce um, in my life, and my first wife had left me for another man, total heart wreck, heart train wreck of a relationship, and my heart was so broken, and I'm looking at her face, and I'm going, oh my goodness, God, you gotta be kidding me. Am I about to be rejected again? I can't take this, I don't wanna deal with this. What's she gonna say? It just the look on her face said she wants to break up, all right? And for those of you out there, maybe you've experienced that, you know, all right? And so she comes in, she goes, I really have to talk to you. I'm like, oh, this is not good. And we sit down on the couch. I'm like, what's wrong? What's going on? Is everything okay? She goes, I just, I just gotta tell you something. I need you to know something. And I'm like, oh, here it comes, man. This is, this is not gonna be good. And she just starts to open up and share a part of her story of incredible brokenness and a decision that she made. And she said, Dan, before this relationship goes any farther, I just really need you to know all of my story. Because I don't want to get farther down the road and be wondering, if you really knew me, if you really knew what I've done, will you still love me? So I need to tell you this. And I need you to know me. And I need you to know my story. And I need to know that you will love me in spite of my story. Well, three children later <laughs> and 20 some years of incredible marriage, um, you know the answer to that question. But that was the moment that I didn't just in my mind and my heart go, oh wow, I really love her, she's beautiful, this is gonna be great, yeah, I think we should get married. That's when I knew that I knew that I knew this is the woman I wanna marry. Because this is a person, I'm gonna talk more about this next week, this is a person that doesn't wanna just laugh and have a good time together, she wants to get real and go deep together in life. Great relationships carry both characteristics. Both, both characteristics are in, both in, in a great relationship. And so that was the night, that was the moment when I knew this is the woman I'm gonna marry. Listen to how the Apostle Paul says this. In Philippians chapter one, Paul's writing to his friends in Philippi in chapter three through five and then verse seven, he says this. He says, every time I think of you, listen to how beautiful this is. I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make requests for all of you with joy for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard of it until now. And then skip. Verse seven, so it is right that I should feel as I do about you, all of you, for I have a special place in my heart. For you have a special place in my heart, heart and soul. See, now we find out why they had a special place in Paul's heart. 
This is what he says in verse 7. He continues, You share with me in the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. Paul's like this. Listen, you knew me at my worst when I was in prison, and you've known me at my best when I've been preaching the gospel. You know my lowest point, and you know my highlight reel, and you still love me. You're still partnered with me. You know that I wasn't okay, and you still love me. Love me. That's why you have a special place in my heart. And he goes on. I love this next part, verse 8 and 9. He says this, God knows how much I love you, and I long for you. This is a strong man saying this, all right, guys? I long for you with a tender compassion of Christ Jesus. And then I love this. And I pray that your love will overflow more and more. He's saying, I love you because you know me and you love me. May this love keep growing and flowing out into the lives of others around you. Amen? That's my heart this year, that we understand these two truths, that the who's matter more than the what. We gotta be connected relationally to reach our goals. And secondly, our hearts will never know that we're fully loved until our hearts know that we are known by someone else, that we're honest and open with someone else. Now, we never end our services without giving you the opportunity to make the greatest decision of your life. The greatest decision of your life is to connect with the ultimate who, and his name is Jesus. He is the who that can help you accomplish every what that your heart desires. He is the who who knows you more than anyone else and still laid his life down for you and for me. Nobody has loved us like that. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans and he says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He knew every mistake, everything that we would do wrong, and he loved us enough to lay his life down for us. No one has loved us like that. So if today you're ready to make the ultimate decision of your life and say yes to him, then I would encourage you, would you pray this with me right now? Just pray this with me right now in your heart. Just say this, Lord Jesus, I commit my life to you. Jesus, I need you. Lord, forgive me of my sin. You know what it is, and not only do you know it, you love me anyway. Thank you for loving me like that. Thank you for forgiving me like that. Fill me with your presence, oh God. Fill me with your spirit. I want to walk with you, and I want to know you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. If you made that decision, it's the greatest decision of your life. Would you please let us know that you made that decision today? We want to walk with you and encourage you. So, I pray you have a strong week. We're going to push pause on this. Be thinking this week, who are the who's you need to be more intentionally involved with this year so that you can reach the what goals of your life? And next week, we're going to drill down even deeper and talk about what real authentic community actually looks like. Can't wait to see you next week. We heard today that community is such an important part of our faith. And one of the reasons that community is so important is because it lets us lean into the needs of others. This year, our Adopt-A-Family toy drive, the Pure Heart family poured out generosity really in such amazing ways. We had 54 families that were adopted from local schools and 46 families through our resource center. And the families that were adopted, they worked with the sponsors to find gifts that the children would love. And those 100 adopted families were then also invited to a Christmas community dinner at our Peoria campus. But that's not all, because we received through donations another 1,300 toys and 90 bikes to distribute to families in need. These toys and bikes went out to a network of partners that Pure Heart has built. Toys were taken to children in Mexico to the Navajo Reservation. They were distributed to local ministries and then ones that work with the inner city, the Department of Child Safety. God let us reach so many children and families this Christmas, impacting our community, our world, with the love and hope of Christ through the generosity of our church family. What an amazing thing, what a blessing. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for the ability to love our community, God. Let us see with your eyes. Let us see where there's need. Let us see where there's pain and struggle and hurt, Lord, and let us follow into those areas, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the generosity of the Pure Heart family that has continued to pour out to those struggling and those in need to show the love of Christ. And Heavenly Father, we ask you that as those uh, tithes and offerings continue to come in, Lord, that you're going to continue to bless them, bless the giver, and God, let us in this new year know how to lean into community and know what you want for our lives, the things you want us to process through in community in new ways. In Jesus' name, amen. 
so blessed to be a part of a Pure Heart family that loves like you guys do. And I just wanna let you know that we care about you. If you're struggling in this season, in this new year, please reach out to the number listed below. Scan the QR code because no one walks alone. Community is so important. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us with Pure Heart Online, a place where we say it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to pretend and it's not okay to stay stuck. If you have just recently begun tuning in, we would really love to connect with you and find out more about you. So go ahead, go to pureheart.org forward slash online connect, fill out that connect form. And if you missed out and are looking to watch last week's message, then go ahead and click the link below.